What's up guys, I'm JC Corner, and welcome back to another episode of Terminal TV. Thank you all for tuning in, I hope you guys are doing well, healthy, and are staying strong during these difficult times. In this episode, we will be talking about new music and tour updates and announcements, with important themes for this episode including Illuminate, Electronic Noise, and the Dark Scene of Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico. We'll be having special interviews plus music video showings with Carlos Manufactura and Abby Tan. We will also be having interviews with Chrome Girl from Los Angeles and DJ Betty who has a special treat for you all watching in a new segment called Dark Cuisine. If you're interested in hearing readings on your horoscopes, Tiffany Retro Zombie will be presenting horoscope readings for the month of July. We will also be having special DJ sets presented by DJ Terminal, DJ Cristabel, and DJ Fallen Angle. So there is much to look forward to in this episode of Terminal TV. We will start by talking about new music that was announced or released this past month of June. Solar Flake has released a live DVD and CD album called Solar Flake Who Cares It's Live. The album was released on June 22nd and has been released under Out of Line Music. God Module have also announced that they will be releasing a remix album for the new recent album called The Unsound. This album will be called The Unsound Remixes and it will be available everywhere on August 17th. Snog have also released a new music video for their song Ball and Chain. The song is off of the latest album called Lullabies for the Lithium Age. Swedish post-punk band called Then Come Silence have also released their fifth album called Machine and it will be released on their Metropolis Records. Static Bloom have announced that they will be releasing a new album called Beneath the Well and it will be released on July 10. KMFDM have also announced that they will be releasing a new album called Indo. This new album will be released August 21st and it will be a reinterpretation of their best known songs of their 35 year long career. German Gothic metal band called Mono Inc. have also released a new album called The Book of Fire under No Cut Records marking the band's 11th album. Broader Sand have also released a new album called How Do You Feel Today? This album was released on their Metropolis Records and it marks their 7th album release to this day. Now we'll be moving on to tour updates and announcements for the tours of the past month of June. First off, it seems like that Obscured single released by Blue Tango and Osiko was in fact a tease for a joint tour in Europe. The tour will also be including bands such as Chrome, Induxia, and XRX, and it is set for spring of 2021. Industrial metal band Rammstein have also announced that they have new rescheduled dates for their European stadium tour. New dates will be moved to summer of 2021, and it is only a matter of time until they announce more dates for the rest of their world tour. The long-awaited Front 242 US tour that was set for this year has now been confirmed for spring of 2021. Special guests for some nights will be including Consolidated, Dracula's Ball, and Stabbing Westward. Industrial rock band Nine Inch Nails have also teased that they are working on new music, which also means that they will hopefully be able to go on a world tour sometime in 2021. Not much information was given on that, but fans should be on the lookout for more announcements for that album and possibly a tour. What's up guys, I'm here with Carlos Manufactura, one of the most influential persons in the dark scene, thanks to his three different projects and also his record labels, Crunch Pod Records and Our Comedia. How are you, Carlos? Doing good, thanks for asking. That's good, man. First off, I wanted to take the time to wish you a happy birthday, because I know it was a few days ago, right? Yeah, that's right. How did you spend your day, man? Uh, working on music, man. It's what I love to do, it's my favorite pastime. It's, it's my life. It's your passion? Yes, it's very, very good. And I know you're a very busy man, thanks to all your three, your three different projects and also your record label. And I also know that you just released a new album for your Broken Pavilion project, right? That's correct, yeah. Can you tell us more about this album? Uh, well, it's uh, three years in the making. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't get the original singer that lives in Seattle to do some of the vocals. Okay. Uh, and because of that, I ended up having to find uh, some new artists, uh, new vocalists that are on the label and, and friends of friends and they ended up actually doing a really great job so because of them I was able to put the album together. That's good. And you said there were complications. Were they because of COVID-19? Yeah. Uh, because of COVID-19 I, uh, I had to basically kind of do the post-production in a completely different fashion than I normally do and I had to do some of the recording techniques uh, a little different than what I'm normally used to. And now that we're talking about COVID-19, how else has it affected your life? Well, technically, uh, I'm still working, so uh, it hasn't really affected me a whole lot other than, uh, you know, the issues with, you know, society and 
know, and the way that you know we have to keep our distances and wear our masks. Uh, but I know that it's affected a lot of friends, a lot of close friends, you know, with their jobs and, and with their livelihoods. So yeah. this, during this time, you can't see your friends or family that much. Yeah, you, right? that's correct. I mean, it's been uh, that's been hard yeah. as well. You know, I'm used to seeing a lot of friends, and spending time with friends, and so it, now it's mostly just phone calls and you know social media. But that's it. Yeah. Well, now tell me about your project, Manufactura. I know it's a very influential project in the whole dark scene all around the world. When did you start doing music for Manufactura? Uh, I started in 1998. Uh, it was basically just experimental noise, uh, basically just you know for experimentation purposes, yeah. and you know just, just to play around. And uh, eventually, I had some friends. You know that were DJs and musicians that were telling me that I should start putting music out, that I should focus on it. And so eventually, I did end up putting a few demos in uh, 2000, and then by 2000, 2001, I put out the new album, or the first album. Uh, and now I'm working on the tenth album. So. Oh, that's good, man. And what influenced you into starting Manufactura, and what? If what were your influences going into Manifatura? Uh, my primary musical influence was David Lynch, who's okay. known as a director, yeah. but he's also a musician. Yeah. Uh, when I saw Eraserhead when I was a young kid, I had never experienced anything like that, where it's basically almost a silent film, but it's just sound that he was using and he was producing for the movie to give movement to what he was showing. Yeah. That it impacted me in a way that, uh, to this day, it still influences what I do. So, how would you say your experience throughout the years has been, thanks to Manufactura? Uh, well, it's a, it's a love-hate thing. Uh, mostly because it's opened a lot of doors and a lot of opportunities. Yeah. Also because I'm able to connect with people all over the world. Uh, you know, collaboration with other artists. Uh, but also a hate thing because, you know, when I first started out, I was one of a handful of uh, Hispanic musicians. I think maybe there was only uh, Josico around at the time, Zenobita, you know, uh, outside of that, very, at least in that genre, yeah. um, it was very tough. Uh, and then going out on tour and, you know, experiencing some of the uh, negativities and racism uh, yeah. around the country uh, it's created a lot of problems as well. I bet you see everything around the world. Uh, yeah, I pretty much have seen it all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now tell me about your logo, your knife logo. What does it mean to you? Your Well, the logo is, to me, whatever it depends on the individual and how they feel about it. Okay. Uh, but to me, it basically means endurance. Okay. Uh, it means that, you know, you, you've gone through the shit and you've now uh, surpassed it. Um, so it basically stands for endurance. That's good. And also you said it stands for whatever the person seeing it wants yes. to believe it is? Yes, because uh, I know that there's a few people out there that have had it tattooed on themselves. Yeah. And so, you know, I don't want to put a significance on it. Okay. Uh, it's a symbol. Okay. But that symbol stands for what is the individual experiencing the symbol will want it to be. The same thing with a lot of the music. I try to leave it in a certain fashion, open-ended, okay. so that when the listener is interacting with the music, uh, they're interacting in their own experience. It's more yeah. abstract. In a way, yes. Okay. And in a way, it's directed so that your uh, feelings and emotions take you a certain way. It's awesome. And you decide you know, how it's going to lead you. To some people, it, it helps them. Uh, go through a lot of bad stuff and to other people it, it helps them relieve their anger and their stress. So. Yeah, because it's very powerful too. Some of it is, yeah. yeah, some of it is kind of mellow and yeah, yeah it's all over the place. That's good. Uh, is there anything new you're working for on uh, the Yeah, basically I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, analog material for this new one, um, a lot of hardware, okay. um, and I'm going to be mixing a few different elements that I used in the past, but I'm going to uh, heighten them up a little bit more in this. Awesome. Fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> now, tell me about your record labels. Thanks to them, you have given them 
many bands all around the world, an opportunity to be heard and also be supporting many different bands. Can you tell me more about these record labels of yours? Well, technically, there's only one now. Okay. Uh, when I started out, uh, uh, it was a partnership between me and Converter. Okay. Uh, and we partnered up and created our Comedia okay. uh, back in 2000. And uh, we were going to be able to put out uh, mostly some of his music and, and then some of uh, Unfortunately, it didn't work out. And so I kept our open media, the name mostly as a production unit okay. for mastering and graphic work. And, and then CrunchPod, when I signed on with them back in 2005, they've always been really good to me. Uh, ben Arp has been uh, a true gentleman and he's always been solid with me. And when he decided to step away from music and not have anything to do with the label, I asked him if he'd be interested in leaving me the name because I didn't want to release under anybody else because uh, I've always felt that French Pod and Manufactura have always been a oh. solid union. Oh, that's good. And so because of that, I kept the name, I released a couple of albums under that, and, and then I started looking into maybe, you know, offering other artists that might need a place to release music. Uh, you know, people similar like me that are on the fringe or on the cusp yeah. of something different that is not necessarily, even though our scene is not mainstream, there's still a mainstream type of style. And so I like to be on the outside of that. Okay. And so because of that, uh, I wanted to have something to offer other artists to do that. And uh, it's, it's done really well so far. So thankfully uh, it's received well. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people so far like a lot of the releases we've been putting out. So. Sounds great, man. Yeah. Well, earlier we were talking about how COVID-19 affected you. Now, what would you recommend everybody at home watching you right now to do during this pandemic? Uh, well, first off, I think you, you definitely got to wear a mask. You know, I think it's, uh, you know, it's kind of rude. It's kind of like being an asshole if you're not wearing a mask. <laughs> There's a lot of people putting their lives at risk. You know, and uh, it's kind of necessary as well. Well, we were doing so well and because of current politic climate and the nonsense that we have as far as the leadership in this country it's kind of degraded that and because of that we've kind of gone back to a bad place and it's going to get worse before it gets better so if we don't at least do the basic minimum of covering up and protecting yourself then there's really a point yeah we need to take the proper precautions yeah basically. well thank you very much Carlos Manufactura for your words and also for your time for letting us talk to about your music, your legacy, and also for being such a great support to Fluke Terminal for oh, yeah. many, many years. I love Fluke Terminal. Thank you, man. <laughs> we love you too, man. Thank you. Well, this has been Carlos Manufactura for Terminal TV. Stick around because Carlos Manufactura is about to present for us a music video for his band, Manufactura. Thank you.
Now we'll be talking about electronic noise. Electronic noise is a subgenre of industrial that blends industrial with noise music and various other styles of EDM. Electronic noise began in England and Germany back in the 1990s and have been a huge part of the dark scene. Electronic noise is characterized by distorted and sometimes miniaturistic beats, but they are usually abstract with experimental, hard and harsh sounds that always pack a punch. Some well-known electronic noise acts include Beamflug, Terraflag, Manufactura, Converter, and Silphox. To pay tribute to electronic noise, we're going to have our very own DJ Terminal who will be presenting for us a special electronic noise set. Take it away, DJ Terminal.
What's up guys, we are here with Shannon Chrome Girl, one of the most highly recognizable go-go dancers all around the world and also the number one in the LA dark scene. How are you Shannon? I'm good, good, yeah. good to see you guys. How's your family? Good, everything's yeah. good so far. I heard that your birthday is coming up for you soon, right? Yes, Con next week, say, next week. Congrats Thank and you. happy birthday. What are your plans? Um, actually, you know, due to COVID, you can't really do too much, so we're probably going to live stream here in my apartment and you know hopefully my friends can wish me happy birthday hopefully oh so, yeah because i mean covid did measure like shorten the things that we could do and yeah. meet up with people yeah how else has covid19 affected you i have been out of work for four months now because i'm a bartender i'm a performer so yeah i've been on unemployment for four months and yeah that's you know, been just kind of living here in Club Chrome. Yeah. <laughs> it looks amazing though. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Now, you've been considered to be one of the most influ influential and also the most recognized go-go dancer all around the world. And you could be considered the best here in the Los Angeles dark scene. Thank you. What does that mean to you? Um, it's been a lot of work. I mean, I moved here from a small town in Georgia and, you know, I wanted to dance and I wanted to model and perform and you know all of that and it took a long time to sort of network and meet the right people and you know I love dancing and I love creating costumes so you know I always try to just one-up myself every time you know it's I love it it's my life this is what I do you know I'm a creative person it's your passion it really is yes how long have you been a go-go dancer for more than 20 years that doesn't mean I'm old. <laughs> I'm only 27, so I started when I was seven. <laughs> <laughs> How has that been like for you, that experience of the whole go-go dancing? Wow. I've seen the scene change so much. I've seen a lot of people come and go. I've seen clubs come and go. You know, it's changed and evolved, and I'm, I'm really just grateful to still be doing this. You know, I love it. And, uh, you know, I still love the music. I, I'm sure I always will, so, yeah. yeah, I love it. What was the thing that influence you into becoming a go-go dancer? I've always been a dancer. Yeah. You know, even as a kid, I wanted to be a ballet dancer and took dance class. And then, you know, at, when I became a teenager, I started going to clubs. I started clubbing at 13. Oh. So I would, they had go-go dancers and I would always, you know, oh, well, I want to do that sort of thing. Yeah. And eventually, you know, I'm dancing and people, someone just asked me, hey, do you want to come dance for this club? And that's just how it happened. You know? That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, where did your name Chrome Girl come from, or what does it mean to you? Um, it's, it's kind of a long story. Not not really. I'll try to shorten it. Mm -hmm. I'm actually allergic to gold. Oh, really? So I had a really bad allergic reaction when I was a kid to gold, so I've always been partial to silver. Oh, cool. um, I had this gig that I did in Vegas a long time ago, and there are all these little shirts that said Chrome Girl with this little... It's actually... A, you ever seen those trucker... Trucker... Um, like flaps, whether it's like a girl, it's like a silhouette. Oh, yeah, that yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a chrome girl. Oh, okay. So there was all these t shirts that said chrome girl, and I didn't know the trucker thing. I just saw the t shirt with the girl, and she, you know, it was so cool. And I'm like, chrome girl, because I love silver. Okay. That's going to be my name. So from like, I don't know, the year 2000 on, it's that's been my name. It caught your attention? Yes. Right away? Yes. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I've also been seeing that you've been posting a lot of traveling. Like, do you like to travel a lot? Oh. Traveling, yes, that's my thing. Yeah, I love to travel. Are there any of the hobbies that you like to do during your spare time? Um, create costumes. Um, you know, since we've been doing the COVID, we having to deal with that, not being able to leave the apartment, we've really redecorated everything. You know, you know, just do all kinds of things with costumes and like anything that lights up. You know, any kind of LEDs or any of that. I love it. So costume making more than anything. It's awesome. Now that you mentioned COVID-19, um, what would you recommend everybody out there listening to you right now? Um, just stay at home, you know, wash your hands and get tested, you know, try to stay away from everybody, all the things that they tell you to do. Just try to be safe, you know, don't do anything risky and stay away from the large crowds. You have to take the proper precautions, right? Yeah. And that's the only way we're going to make it. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to take this chance to thank you for all those years of support for being always such a professional person to work with and everything. It's always been greatly appreciated, especially in Club Terminal. Yeah. And also, thank you for your time. Of course. For letting us come into your home to talk to you about your legacy and also 
Oh, you are a go-go dancer. Thank you very much, Tanya. Yes, yes, you're welcome. I love Club Terminal. Thank I you. can't wait to dance for you guys again when all this is over. And we love you too. Thank Yay. you, Shannon. This has been Chrome Girl for Terminal TV. Top 10 music videos for the month of July. Picking off our list in our number 10 spot, we have Centrifuge with their song Circles of Dust. This New York band has been around since 2005 and has helped keep the dark scene alive in recent years. The song is off of their latest album from 2018 called The Synthesized Parallels and it was released under Cleopatra Records. In our number 9 spot, we have Tragic Black with the song Surreal Catharsis. This death rock band comes from Utah and incorporates many different elements to the music in the dark scene. This song is off of their album called Decadent Requiem and it remains one of their most well-known songs to this day. In the number 8 spot, we have Carved Souls with their song Restart. This dark wave synth pop band is from Southern California and is known for their melodic dark songs. The song is off of their album called Dismantled and it is one of their most famous songs to this day. In the number 7 spot, we have Exploto with their song, If I Never. This band is from Los Angeles and they are one of the most dominant LA death rock bands. The song is off of their album, Ano Domini. They have been around since 1980s and have, can be considered one of the pioneers of death rock. Number 6, we have SITV with their song, Dunkle Zippa. This powerful EDM industrial band comes from all the way from Germany and have also helped keep the dark scene alive in recent years. The song is off of their self-titled album, Don't Cold Sip, and it remains one of their most well-known songs to this day. And number five, we have Community FK, with their song, Something Inside Me Has Died. The Spanish from Los Angeles have been around since 1978. They have also helped shape how we have come to know and love death rock. The song is off of their 1985 album called Close One, Sad Eye and is considered a classic of death rock. And number four, we have Centron with their song, 666. This harsh electronic band comes all the way from Germany. This band has been around since 2001 and have also helped keep the dark scene alive in recent years through Powers. The song is off of their album, Dominator, and it is one of their most well-known songs to this day. 
Moving into our top three, we have the number three spot, Mephisto Waltz, with their song, Mephisto Waltz. This gospel rock band is from California and they have been around since 1985. This band has mixed many distinct elements in the discography, making them a classic in the dark scene. This song is off of the album, Thalia, and it is considered a staple in the dark scene. And number two, we have Bunker Box with their song, Hard Home. This electronic industrial band comes all the way from Germany. This band has been around since 1995 and it helped keep the dark scene alive in recent years with their aggressive yet melodic sound. The song is off of their album Hard Way and it is a very well known track of this band. But now for the number one song for the top best music video for the month of July we have Alien Sex Fiend with their song Ignore the Machine. This gothic rock band comes all the way from London, England and can be considered the pioneers of gothic rock. They have helped shape the dark scene the way that it is now. Alien Sex Queen have been around since 1982 and have released 13 albums and are also still active to this day. They have incorporated many different elements from the death rock to industrial and everything in between, making them a super unique band. They are a staple in the dark scene and one of the most influential bands of the dark scene. And there you have it, the top 10 best music videos for the month of July. Now we'll be talking about news on the record label Cleopatra Records. This past month, bands under Cleopatra Records have announced several new things under the label such as Paramount 5000 who have released a music video for the new song Black Lipstick which is a single for the upcoming album called Noble Rocked. Crime Vessel have also announced that they are releasing a new album called Pleasure for the Wicked and they will be releasing August 14th. Rituals have also released a new single featuring Aster Crowley called The Human Curse that teases the coming of new music. Ministry have also released a limited edition vinyl in orange and gold called Every Day is Halloween Greatest Tricks that is available on their bandcamp. There you have it, the news for Cleopatra Records. Now it's time for our interview with Agnella and Carlos of the band Adam Time joining us all the way from Las Vegas, Nevada. How are you guys and how have you guys been doing during this pandemic living in Las Vegas? Hi, thank you for having us. Hello, everybody. Well, it's been a challenge, definitely. The new normal is quite um, unusual. And I think part of the new normal is also adapting to maybe not having concerts, live concerts. So I think that's difficult. Yeah, we've been uh, going to work every day as usual. We just take care of ourselves. Wearing a mask, following protocols. Yes, I agree. We need to take the proper precautions. Can you tell us more about Advitam? How did you guys begin? And what does the name Advitam mean to you? Advitam was born in 2015 in our hometown of Mexico City. Uh, previous to that, uh, we were playing with a different name. We had another keyboardist and it was Advitam Eternam. Uh, Benjamin and I played together with that band for many, many years. And in 2015, we invited my brother to participate. Benjamin left the band, um, we parted ways, our priorities were different and that's when my brother and I decided to continue with the project and just drop off the Aternam and keep it as Advitam. Yeah, it's a new concept, uh, playing more dark wave, minimal synth wave. Um, our first live show was at Dada X in Mexico City, which is a well-known club in the scene. And for us, at Bit Them, it's just a, a lifestyle. It's our passion. It's, yes, it's our baby. Oh, so the lineup for Advi Time wasn't always you two? So how do you guys work together due to the fact that you guys are both brother and sister? Okay, uh, for us it's been uh, quite simple. Uh, we're very independent when it comes to uh, working with the music. Usually I compose, create the music, uh, all the instruments, and once I have a, a structure or a concept, then I can introduce the, the, the track to Agnella, and then we go from there. She starts writing the lyrics and then maybe helping on, on the structure of the, of the song. The arrangements, so usually, yes. Um... I don't think it really, being siblings really has anything to do with the band per se. Um, like he mentioned, uh, we work independently. So once I hear the structure, we go over it. We I adjust, if there needs to be adjustments, I introduce the lyrics, it motivates me to write something. 
but in general, I guess it's just home. Home it feels like home all the time. Here you guys mentioned that you were both born in Mexico City. Tell me, what is it that you guys both miss the most about Mexico? That's a good question. What do I miss the most? I think I miss the food. Now, I miss my friends, the lifestyle. Um, I've always been between the U.S. and Mexico, Mexico City. That's where we're from. So I guess I'm used to living in both, in both countries. But I could definitely say I miss my friends. I have very dear friends here in, in the States as well. But I miss my, the structure of, of the friendship and, and uh, the clubs and the scene. Yeah, Mexico City is our hometown, so we definitely miss our friends. Uh, we miss the weather, we miss yes. the museums, we miss the art, uh, the live shows, the scene. Uh, we the miss weather. Our family. And uh, our friends are our family, so we, we yeah, really miss them. Definitely. But we have a new family and new friends here as well, so. Yeah, it's been great here. Well. It's been great. After this interview, we are going to be showing your video for your song, Delirium. Can you tell us more about the video and anything new you guys are working on? Delirium was uh, filmed in Mexico City. It was uh, directed and produced by a very good friend of ours, Enrique Tamayo. Um, the creepy character in the video is also another good friend of ours, Natasha Puga. So they were very helpful. They guided us through the whole procedure of filming the video. It was very exhausting. It took us a little bit, maybe over 12 hours to film the complete video. We started at around 8 p.m. well into the next morning. And when it comes to releasing music, we just think it's not a really good time uh, due to the pandemic. So hopefully by the end of the year or next year, we, we should be sharing some uh, good new tracks for you guys. And we would like to get back to the, to the stages. Right. Um, I think it's important that we're back sharing it live. And we wanted to thank Club Terminal. Thank you for the thank time. Thank you guys. Well, thank you very much, Adley Time. Your time is greatly appreciated. As mentioned before, we'll be showing the music video for their song, Delirium. If you guys like what you hear, make sure to go check them out. Here it is, the music video, Delirium.
What's up guys, I'm here with DJ Tari, a DJ with great influence in the LA dark scene who's going to be presenting for us a special treat just for Terminal TV. How are you, buddy? I'm doing good. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I know that your wedding anniversary is coming very, very soon, right? November. How has that experience been like for you? It's been an interesting ride. Uh, you know, we're we're very compatible. So yeah. you guys um, I would say that, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're like going everywhere. He's great with my daughter. Um, and he pretty much like we just know, you know, how to do our own thing without like being on each other. Uh, bring it over someone's shoulder so yeah it flows that's awesome yeah i also remember your wedding party that was a 50 themes right uh it was 1920s we oh, did the a 20s theme yeah okay with you guys it was awesome dude. and also thank you for letting us take the chance to celebrate you and ryan because that was a very awesome party right well, yeah. did you have fun oh i had a lot of fun it was pretty fun was i also fun. know you're going to be presenting for us a special treat right yes i will be uh pretty much Cooking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, since I love cooking. Okay. I saw that you've been posting more recently recipes and cooking online. Yes. What motivated you to start cooking? Um, I've always liked cooking. I started cooking since I was eight years old. So okay. I always just like experimenting things in the kitchen. Yeah. So uh, when I got married, I started experimenting more with the Asian food since my husband is half Japanese, half Chinese. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. It's in your heart. It's your passion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Well, how are we going to start cooking this? Okay, so what I'm going to do today is something uh, easy, especially since everybody likes fried rice. Uh, this fried rice is more Japanese. Okay. So some people call it hibachi rice, so okay. we'll go with that. Awesome. And uh, you want me to explain the ingredients? Ingredients for the recipe. Okay, well, of course, uh, it's your typical um, like uh, eggs. I have two eggs here. Okay. Chopped chicken, you can use boneless uh, thigh meat or you know white meat like chicken breast. I ended up using chicken breast for okay. this one. This is called in Japanese kamaboko, it's a fish cake. And then we have you know your brown onions that are chopped. Okay. We have chopped fresh carrots, or you can use frozen ones, but I prefer to use fresh. Okay. And then the little uh, salts that I use this is chicken bouillon. And this powder here, it's called dashi. It is Japanese. Uh, it's a smoked fish powder. It's used for stock, oh, like right. to make broth as well. Okay. This is minced garlic. We have like a bit of butter here. Okay. And uh, this is sesame oil, black pepper, and I like to use a bit of MSG just to enhance the flavor. Okay. And then of course your little, you know, garnish green onions is always. And we have the rice. The rice has to be steam rice the same day okay. and it's cow rose which is japanese uh steam rice okay okay that's the only rice that will make this taste uh authentic authentic and okay. of course uh soy sauce wise you want to stick to the japanese soy sauce okay. either kikoman usually that's what people buy mm -hmm. i buy this brand here it's very dark okay. very rich and yes it's a bit pricey this is like a nine dollar bottle of soy sauce okay, <laughs> okay. but it's authentic right? yeah that's good and uh, for oil uh, you can use any oil, but uh, since we like to, you know, watch the cholesterol, okay. uh, we like to use soybean oil, um, which is this one here. Or, or, and uh, for the wok, we okay. highly recommend non-Teflon. So it's almost like a cast iron wok, like this one. Okay. Okay. If you use Teflon, the flavor is going to change a bit. Oh, it does? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So that's why we always cook of all our Asian dishes in this type of wok. Okay, that's awesome. That's it. Sounds great. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to start cooking, right? Yeah, it starts smoking. Okay. That's how you know the wok is perfect. Okay. Of course, you want to be careful because it might burn you. The eggs go first. Okay. And I start mixing them in here okay. together. You cast iron. Yeah, it. it's a, a like a iron wok. Okay. And then everything's quick because it's a hot wok, okay? Okay. So then I add the chicken. Okay. That's the second ingredient. The protein. <laughs> the protein comes, you know. And then I start adding. I keep the oil next to me because it might start, you know, sticking a bit. Okay. And see, the flame, I like cooking with high flame. Okay. So we'll let, you know, that's like just cooking here. Okay. That's as high enough as it gets. So. As if, you know, you got to make sure the chicken is cooking well. It's burning. Yeah. And if you notice, I didn't 
beat the eggs, I actually threw whole eggs in here and okay. I'm breaking them apart in the wok. Is it better that way? Uh, yes. More often? Yeah. Usually people that, you know, do the, the beating of the eggs, they do it for uh, like uh, Chinese food, oh, okay. not for this one. Okay. I use uh, oh, is it Japanese, right? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, this is cooking itself here. Okay. And just make sure that the wok is high enough. Let's see. It's high? Yeah. That's high. Okay. okay. And now I will go ahead and add the carrots and the onions. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna start smelling the ingredients. And you know, the Japanese don't really use garlic a lot. What do you do? If they do, um, it's just to like enhance certain like, perhaps like sauces or um, like, uh, what is it? Their soups. Okay. If you like ramen. Okay. And but I, the, the the garlic is not always as pungent with Japanese food. Oh, okay. So I'm cooking. I'm still moving the stuff because we don't want to get sick. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I know that this makes a lot of noise, but if you notice the kind of spoon, yeah, cookie spoon, yeah. it's good because it allows you control of the food. Oh, and of okay. course, you know I don't want to get burned, burned? so yeah. I always hold the wok okay. and I cook everything. So everything has a reason, specifically. Yes. Okay. But is it's a chemistry or a science to it? Okay. Okay. The the smaller the pieces of chicken, the faster they cook. Okay. So okay. that's why I cut them as small as I could. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, I use breast meat this time, but normally I use, you know, the um, the boneless chicken. Oh, okay. okay. Is and there a specific place that you prefer to buy your stuff? Yes, for uh, like pretty much uh, well, um, Chinese stuff, I buy it at the 99 Ranch, which okay. is a Chinese market. Oh, okay. Um, and for Japanese uh, ingredients, I go to, it's called Tokyo, the Tokyo market. Okay. Um, there's a, a, it used to be called Marukai market, okay. but it has to be a Japanese market to get like your actual Japanese ingredients. To make sure it's yeah. authentic. Okay. Yes, okay. exactly. I get it. The soy sauce is important. Yeah. But like I said here, I'm using Japanese soy sauce. Okay. Um, you, you, if you use Chinese, it tastes, it changes the flavor. Oh, okay. It's all on the, on the kind of like soybeans that they use for their soy sauce. Oh, okay. All right, so now that I see that this is a bit better, now I add mm -hmm. the kamaboko, okay. which is the fish cake. You probably, if you guys are anime fans, you'll see that the kamaboko is usually used in women. It is. That's <laughs> one thing I know. <laughs> okay, so I mix now all this stuff together. Okay. And it just, it's, it's pretty cooked because the kamaboko, the fish cake, is already like cooked. Okay. So I don't need to do too much. You have to pre cook it? Yeah, no, it's oh. already cooked. Oh, okay. It comes in the refrigerator section, so oh, okay. you'll find it in there. Okay. okay. Now, this is where I start adding the rice. The rice, I steam it. You can use one cup. Two cup, depending on your family or who you're having over. I like to make this rice when I have a lot of people over. Okay. And it's like I said, it's cow rolls. And the reason, look how sticky, it's sticky. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's like a sticky kind of rice. Is that, it, ha it has to be sticky? Yes. Okay. It's a cow rose, that's what it would say in the back, cow, cow, cow rose rice. Okay. So I'm going to be adding little by little the rice in there. It has to be sticky for the texture or? It's for the type of rice, like a uh, rice dish that it is. Oh, okay. Like that's why I was, I stressed the important that it has to be Japanese rice. Okay. Because if you use like jasmine or the regular rice okay. for your other dishes, yeah. it's not, the texture is not going to be the same. Oh, okay. 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 So, yeah, see how sticky it is? I have to like break it. Yeah. Put a little force into it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> And I make this, sometimes I make it for breakfast because it's something quick. It is? Yeah. So for now, I'm going to just add that a little bit there. Okay. Back to holding this. Don't worry, nothing's burning in here. Okay. It smells great. Right? Mm -hmm. All right, so the rice is in there. And now I start adding the sauces. Okay. So here we go. The first thing that's going to go in here will be the butter. Okay. And then we're going to add the garlic. Mm -hmm. And it's fine if I leave that there. Okay. This is the bonito powder, which is the dashi. Okay. I know it looks salty, but it all <laughs> depends on how much. I, I, I try not to measure. Okay. 
I go by by vision. Oh, okay, that's awesome. The black pepper, it's just a little bit. And then now I add the soy sauce. Okay, and I start mixing everything okay. as I go. Do the spices play a specific role? Or what, is, huh? what, is the, what is the role of all the spices you just put in? Um, each one amplifies the rice to give it flavor. Okay. And normally, I believe this rice is what people go get at their, what is it, at their uh, Japanese, like, tepan okay. barbecue, yeah. where they cook in your table. Yeah. That's the kind of rice that this would be similar. Oh, okay, okay. If you go to ramen places, they do that too. They serve a type of rice. Okay. Okay. And, um, let be sure. It looks greasy because it's all the butter. It makes it shiny. Okay. Okay. But see, everything's cooking together. Okay. It looks good already. And you can smell it too. The yeah. soy sauce is so pungent. Yeah. I love it. And surprisingly, I didn't have to use a lot of uh, soybean oil. Okay. Normally, it would stick. Oh, it does? Yeah. Okay. So I'm glad that I kind of guessed how much oil is going to need. Okay. All right. Now, mm -hmm. I'm going to add a bit of, like I said, I like using MSG. It's up to you. Some people get headaches with it. Okay. I don't. Okay. And now I add this, which is the green onions, mm -hmm. just to add color to it. It's a garnish, basically? Mm -hmm. Okay. And now it's now you hear the, the sizzle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, when you finish like eating, like when you serve the rice, mm -hmm. uh, some people like to put toppings in it. Okay. There's something called furikake that I'll add when I put this in the serving dish. Okay. What is the point of the MSG? It it gives it like a flavor boost. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If um that's one thing that I noticed that the Asian people use, especially Chinese, they like to add um, that to their foods to like give it a like a wake up taste. Too. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, let's see. Yeah, make sure that the chicken and everything is well cooked. So, like I said, I don't want you guys to get sick. So, make sure you cook your chicken well or cut it small enough so it won't. Mm -hmm. okay. So, almost done. And the last thing I add, this is sesame oil. Mm -hmm. There's Japanese, there's Vietnamese. I like the Japanese sesame oil, okay? This is for that. Now you're gonna notice a different scent. And yes, I know it's noisy with this spoon, but this is the typical spoon that they use okay. to move everything around. There you go. Now it's done. Looks great. See how quick it was? Yeah. <laughs> Looks great. Right. Okay, now we transferred it to a, to a serving bowl. Yeah, okay. and you know, you just want to garnish to make it look nice. Okay. Okay, and it depends on your like preference. palette or okay. preference. Um, we like using a, the Japanese uh, rice toppers. Like in this case, we got this one. Okay. What it is, it's nori, which is like dried seaweed mm -hmm. and toasted sesame seeds. So it's just to add a different taste or to you know, uh, change it up a bit, but it doesn't really do much. It's just for, like I said, just for flavor. Okay. So, let's try it. Yeah, of course. But, and it's also a very good treat because many people are stuck at home. Yeah. Also learning how to cook has been a very prominent deal during this pandemic. Right. Now that we're talking about the pandemic, how has COVID-19 affected you? Well, I've been cooking more at home, which okay. saves money. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is true, you want to support your local businesses, but sometimes if you can't, you, you just can't. So just, you know, we just buy the groceries and I try to make the foods at home. Like I said, change it up. Japanese fried rice, something simple, feeds a lot of people. Okay. You know, ramen, um, uh, since I'm Latina. Yeah. Uh, I do make uh, other dishes too, mm -hmm. so you know, we change it up. But yeah, mostly we cook at home. That's awesome. Yeah. Have you been doing live streams thanks to the pandemic? No, no live streams. I know I've been asked if, if I could do like live DJing, yeah. uh, live different things, yeah. and I'm just like, no, I, I'm fine. But you know, since Terminal asked me, I'm like, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> do you miss DJing at the clubs? Uh, I do miss the company with you know hanging out with you guys. Mm -hmm. So. 
hopefully soon we'll be able to do something back again. Yeah. Oh, we welcome that, of course. Yeah. What, what would you say is your favorite style of music to play when you're a DJ? Uh, it has to, I, I've always just like noise. Um, that's usually what I play, and then every now and then I'll just bring in the dark EDM because I, I know that especially some of the crowds prefer that type of music, but mostly noise. <laughs> Well, it sounds great. Well, thank you very much, Bhakti, for presenting this awesome special treat just for you because we're about to try this. Yes, and I want you to, to try it first. Okay. Okay, so we'll go ahead and serve you a bowl. And um, we usually serve in, this, in these small bowls. I know they look like just a little bit, okay. but it's going right to be mind. very filling, yeah. Okay. So I'll give you just so you could try it. Okay. You could try it without the, pur the purikake first. That's what it's called, by the way, purikake. purikake. And go ahead and awesome. check it out. Awesome. Then you can try it with the curry if you like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That tastes amazing. <laughs> oh my god, I love this rice. It's so easy. If you have a picky eater, like my daughter, okay. she will eat this. She'll want two bowls sometimes. It's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. Yay! I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> this is amazing. Thank you very much, DJ Bhatti, for presenting such an amazing treat just for us and for Terminal to be. This is DJ Bhatti. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Are you guys familiar with the dark scene in Tijuana, Mexico? Well, Tijuana has played a huge part in keeping the dark scene alive in Mexico and also even the US for many, many years. Tijuana has been a place where people from all over Mexico and the US meet to see many of the bands we have come to know and love. Many big bands we have come to know and love have played in Tijuana and many more DJs and bands are also from Tijuana such as Ante Morten, Noise of Terror, Caotica, and so many more. Like many places throughout Mexico, Tijuana has a huge, distinct, and unique style for the dark scene as in looks, sound, and feel. To represent Tijuana dark scene, we will be having DJ Cristabel of Dead Corvex joining us all the way from Tijuana, Mexico, who is going to be presenting for us an exclusive set of the most popular music heard in Tijuana. Here we go with DJ Cristabel.
Are you guys ready to hear information about your horoscope? Well, up next, Tiffany Retro Zombie is going to be presenting horoscope readings for the month of July. So here we go with Tiffany Retro Zombie. Thank you, JC Corner. Hi guys, I'm Tiffany of Retro Zombies Readings, and I'm bringing you another month of horoscopes for Aries. Finally, Mars is home as it returned in Aries, making you feel like your old self again. Chiron helps you heal old emotional wounds, while Eris makes you let go of useless old friends that, of course, aren't worth anything anymore. Time for you to reboot, reset, restart, reload, and review everything in your life change routines and find new journeys. For Taurus, time to hit the brakes on life and cut back from allowing confusion in your life. Definitely be unique as Uranus allows your mind to build up self-confidence again. Open up a savings account instead of buying little things. New ideas come in all month, so take mental breaks and spend time with family. And for Gemini, for Gemini, definitely Mercury in retrograde is affecting absolutely everything in your life. For Gemini, you will definitely have to move on and move out of old situations and old things. Definitely mend things with your relatives and with your friends. And definitely be the life of the party for the month of July. As August, you're going to start to take new things in control of your life. For Cancer, definitely time to fix your outer shell. Dear Crab, new look for you and home. Set up video talk dates with friends. July 20th, New Moon in Cancer helps you build new beginnings. And also good luck comes in from the cosmos this month. Open a savings account to take future trips. Mercury helps you find the right words to say all month, even if they are good or bad. And Cancer, happy birthday. For Leo, time to go ahead and take safe, safe travels and road trips. And definitely your vain and conceited self will be very picture happy. After six months of hell, basically, that you have already lived, this month finally brings you to move your goals forward. Open your ears and eyes to new ideas and move on. Purge your closet, organize, and box up stuff. You do not need to use any of those things. Well, guess what? Go ahead and donate those things. Enjoy a month of clear thinking and happy birthday. Now for Virgo. Virgo, your love for human attachments, the spotlight is in full effect for you this time. And go ahead and find love in your heart this month. Definitely that spotlight is something that you really enjoy and that you really like in life. No planets in your cosmos finally allows you to think clearly and go ahead and use your racing mind to be creative and discover suggestions for projects. Aim toward goals and design a new look. A new look for yourself, a new look for life. And definitely be a fashionista this time. And definitely give yourself a good break. Maybe dig out that old oil burner and a notebook and get started with writing creative ideas. For Libra, you must release tension, pressure, and stress this month. Definitely do not look at what others have. Instead, focus on making your wishes come true. As much as you want to rest, you have to push yourself and finish projects and work harder. Buy new pillows, incense, cones, or sticks for the end of your day to go ahead and burn over yourself. And definitely the dwarf planets that are coming in are going to be Maki Maki that offers balance and definitely uh, how May is going to help you to push forward as well. So two dwarf planets are going to be balancing you this entire month. For Scorpio, self-care, personal care, self-maintenance is a must this month. Slow down and stay focused on goals. Do not pay attention to any sort of haters, drama, and jealous people. And definitely open up your mind as your mind is going to expand on creativity and hard work. And definitely be very clear minded and clear thinking will go ahead and help you to push forward as those transformations are going to come through at the end of the month for next month. This month, definitely plug your phone into the wall, place it on silent, and watch old music videos and old movies. For Sagittarius. Shed light on old projects, old plans that worked in the past. 
This month pushes old stress out. Open and use daily alarms and calendars and reminders. By end of this month, this will definitely pay off as you feel more organized. New workouts, walking, yoga, dancing will help you with your health department and your mental health. Orange and purple candles will bring calmness to mind until September 11th. For Capricorn, July 5th lunar eclipse wakes up your mind, intuition, and common sense. Teamwork solutions, good alliances, and good assistance is your goal this month. Healing vibrations finally comes in to allow you to take self-control and to take control on life. Shut off old snake skin and get going. Exercise and rest are a good combination until September 27th. And the full moon is going to be in Sagittarius this month. And that full moon is going to be what's called the Buck Moon. And that's going to definitely help you out to give you a lot of full extra energy. For Aquarius, you need relief from being overworked and burned out. Definitely find what makes you happy in life. And what makes you happy is being the forever student. Definitely see what you want to learn or study or simply watch old YouTube tutorials and go ahead and brush up your current skills and refresh your memory. For work and career ideas flow this month. Do plan family safe trips and go ahead and visit friends in a very, very safe manner. Do plan family safe gatherings as well because you need your family this time and definitely Saturn left your cosmos so you'll be able to relax and for Pisces which is um, the best I, I like to say out of the entire zodiac we say the best for last for Pisces you must aim towards a master plan for the next five months definitely set new intentions for summer at the beach or any water fun Bubble baths or new soaps and shower bring in fragrance therapy, which is really awesome and smells really good. If you can start, go ahead and start a meditation and walking daily to go ahead and to get your blood moving. Buy new yoga mats or any sort of new nice new beach towel to go ahead and work out and relax on because you'll need to go ahead and balance. Put the phone away, lay down on a yoga mat at night with one candle and any music alone. I hope you all enjoy this month's horoscopes. Sleep tight, don't let the vampires bite unless it's Terminal TV. Thank you! Do you guys like German Goth? Well, Illuminate is a gothic rock and dark wave band coming up all the way from Germany. This band was formed by Johannes Berthold back in 1993 and have released 15 albums. They are often associated with Neo Deutsch Totens Cuts or New German Death Art for their themes on love, loss, and the transience of existence. They have a very melodic sound with a piano accompaniment, making them sound more operatic, theatric, and epic. To pay tribute to Illuminate, DJ Fallen Angle will be joining us all the way from Mexico City to present for us a special Illuminate DJ set. Take it away, DJ Fallen Angle. geschieht das Wunder hier auf dieser Erde. Wer Stimme hat zum Sprechen, werde dann sagen dieses eine Wort. In Fahrt, du kalte Nacht des Seins, lasst Eisgang brechen los und Feuer heiß und folgt dem ewigen Lied zum Licht im Eis. Illuminate. Du bist einfach so in mein Leben. 
Leben gestolpert Und ich fiel wegen dir aus allen Wolken Ich wusste zwar schon längst um dein Erscheinen Und bin trotzdem total aus der Bahn geraten Die 
an mich gerichtet sind und warte nur auf den Moment, denn irgendwann einmal wird es geschehen, das Wunder hier auf dieser Erde und eine Stimme sagt, es werde ein neuer Tag. Many of you might know, but this month of July marks Clip Terminal's 16th anniversary. Clip Terminal has been going strong for 16 years and have had the opportunity to span all across the Americas and work with many different bands and DJs, and it's all thanks to you. Clip Terminal would not be where it is now if it wasn't for all of its followers and artists we have had the pleasure to work with. In honor of Clip Terminal's anniversary, we'll be showing a video promo that features many artists, DJs, and followers that Clip Terminal has had the pleasure to work and be with. Here is the video.
Gäste ohne Lohn ist. Mehr absolviert, mehr stark Arus. Mehr dann sind uns gut. Now that this episode is coming to a close, we would like to thank every single person that was part of this video and helped make this video possible. If anybody is interested in being a part of this, you are more than welcome to do so. We would also want to thank every single one of you for watching and tuning in into this episode. Stay strong and find something that helps you push through these difficult times. Don't forget to also take care of yourself and to believe in music. I am JC Corner and I will see you in another episode. This has been Terminal TV. Thank <laughs> you.